Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press, the program where we analyze the day's newspapers and make sense of it. And we're beginning with the Nigerian Tribune. The story here is about the trending issue in Oyo State at the moment. It says, we've been forced to pay about 50 million naira ransom. And that's as Fulani herds ask for forgiveness a shore of peaceful coexistence. Also, we are tired of antics of Seriki Fulani Igongon leaders say. 51 suspected kidnappers, rapists, bandits with police in Okiogun, governor says. Oyo, commissioner of police, government officials tore Ibarapa Okiogun a shore of thorough investigation of all crimes. Still on the top of the Nigerian Tribune, seven day ultimatum. Southwest Governors Miyeti Allah to meet in Akure. Panic hits Nigeria's aviation as traveler dies of COVID-19 in Canada. Key players also predict discrimination against Nigerian travelers. Now on the bottom of the Nigerian Tribune, we see these stories. Hunters rescue 19 victims, arrest six indigents in Kogi State. Auto crash. Governor's delegation stopped from entering Akumba. AAUA shots NTNE confirmed, I beg your pardon, nine confirmed dead. Bandits kill six, injure 20 in fresh attacks in Niger. Opera overheaders. Convene meeting of Nigerian leaders to solve crisis now, Saraki tells Buhari. And the details here says, quit notice. Falano knocks FG, pleads with Akira Delu for extension. Fanny Kaede backs under governor. Sunday, Igoho. ACF Mieti Ala at Jokers, and that's according to the area on Akakafo. And those are the stories on the front page of the Nigerian Tribune. Now, Liberal Sashama will be joining us in just a moment to analyze the stories. But let's begin uh, with uh, the big one. We talked about this earlier, and it's about the Ibarapa community crisis with the herdsmen. We know what happened, that on Friday, a freedom fighter, so to speak, by the name Sondi Adeyemo, went to a Fulani settlement and attacked them. He chased away the head of the Fulani settlement, touched the houses, properties were destroyed, people were injured. And now the community is saying that they were forced to pay about 50 million naira ransom when herdsmen allegedly kidnapped their people and raped allegedly 15 women in Ibarapa community in Oyo State. I don't know if this has degenerated to the point where the government or the security agencies basically wait, so to speak. I mean, that's what the people feel, that they watch and look until things you know, get to this level where people begin to take laws into their own hands. But that's what we're seeing right now. I don't know what you think. Uh, so honest. first of all, the um, Sunday Ibogo or Ibogo, Sunday Adeyemo yes. um, part. You know, I, I think we, we should still just leave it as allegedly because um, there's still you know other details to it um, and what happened uh, on that day. Um, but like you've said, um, when government, most times when the government fails to take responsibility and to you know play its part, people eventually then have to stand up for themselves and take. Um, you know, the laws into their hands and, you know, act to protect themselves. And many people would ask, what happened on Friday, like you've mentioned? What's, how is it different from what has happened with bandits in many, many states across the country yes. that go into communities, chase people away, kill people? You just read on the Tribune this morning, six people were killed, 20 others injured in um, one of the states in, in, in the north. Um, so what is different between that incident and what may have happened in, in, all your in all your state? You know, that, um, of course, the IG of police then, of course, give an order saying that Sonia Adeyemo should be arrested and, and all of that. In what way have, has any of them been different? And do we have the same response from the Nigerian government when we hear that bandits or whoever it is attacks a community or attacks a village in southern Kaduna or in, in Borno or in Katsina? and 20 people are dead or 15 people are dead. We've heard these things for years now, and what do we do? We read about it in the news, we talk about it, and we move on. Those 20 people never really get the justice that, that they, they deserve, deserve. Yes. and that's it. So it's not justifying whatever you know, happened on Friday, but the question is, you know, and I've seen a lot of that on Twitter, what you know in what, what way is it different, different? Yes. you know exactly yes. and why why is the reaction different now and it's really you know great to see you know the, the it's unfortunate really to see these things play out but 
Yesterday, of course, in an interview, I spoke with Yinka Odumaki and uh, the Afenifere um, perspective. So all of these angles will come into play here. Governor Shei Makinde's angle will, will also come into, mm -hmm. play, into play here. There's so much, you know, that has to come together to, you know, for us to have a better picture of what we're dealing with and how it can be solved today. You just mentioned also in the Tribune that there's a meeting between, you know, South yes, um, the Western Governors hold, and yes. Mietiala. Um, and of course, there's, there's a promise of peace and togetherliness. We shouldn't even get there, you know, because this really sounds like crimes have been committed in their hundreds, but now we want to negotiate. We want to talk about how we can, you know, ignore the justice that those lives and those families deserve and, and negotiate. What exactly are we negotiating? What exactly are we going to, what conversation are we going to be having really? You see, this situation is honest? very dicey because you hear about herdsmen killing people. And at the end, the other side, you hear that these are just criminals who masquerade as bandits. So we have no idea right now until the government or the security agencies carry out a thorough investigation, because that would just be blaming somebody else for something they didn't do, simply because maybe they're nomads and they move around, or you know the situation where justice is just, is just not being meted out. Well, the, from the narratives that you hear from the, the people who are affected the most, you can't you know, take these headers out of the picture entirely and blame some mm -hmm. elements, you know, because why aren't they, why aren't we having these elements infiltrate um, um, doctors? Why aren't we having them infiltrate um, other professions and other, you know, other trades? Why aren't we having them invade the marketplaces? Why only headers? And so you cannot take them out of the picture entirely. And if you listen to the testimonies and the statements that people have made for the longest time, it is this, it's about the same picture that has continuously been painted. Um, another thing is these are also the effects of, for many, many years, I believe that people have said, we need to move away from this type of farming. Yes. We need to move away from moving cattle across the country um, in the 21st century. It's 2021. Why do we still need to move cattle across the country? Why can't we have people who want to invest in cattle rearing and, and in that type of farming? Such a Build booming, a ranch. booming opportunity, really. Build a so. ranch. You know, put your cows in your compound. Or, you know, buy some land, put your cows in there, feed them, get the nutri nu nutrients that they want, the water mm -hmm. and the grass and whatever that they eat, and feed them in there. Why are they moving around? So these are still the effects of some of yes. all those things that we have failed to address as a country. And the last one that I would mention is the reaction from the presidency. Over you know the last couple of years, what really has been the, the the reaction and the body language of the presidency? All these things come together to create the chaos that we mm -hmm. eventually because it, it would only take time. But at some point, there's always going to be a breaking point for people who have felt like they have been mistreated for a very very long time. You may at that point now start to question their you know their moves and their actions, but at, very likely at that time it's too late. Because they've seen and they've been frustrated over time by, you know, the lack of, you know, actual action f uh, by the government. Yes. Um, anyway, it's a never-ending uh, conversation. Let's uh, move on to uh, the next paper now. Because the story basically here dominating the Nigerian Tribune is about the situation in Oyo State as well as Ondo, as Ondo State. But then there's this issue of bandits as well. Bandits, uh, you know, killing six, injuring over 20 in Niger State. Hunters rescuing 19 victims. It's just... So much bad news about banditry and kidnapping in the Nigerian papers. Just a reflection of what happens, you know, in the Nigerian society. Let's uh, now turn to the next newspaper. Uh, if you rem remember also when the incidents happened in Bainway, um, there was also the yes. perspective where Mietiala also stepped in. They've always stepped in multiple times to have these conversations and to have these talks when lives have been lost. I remember a paper that I read back then when I was on radio saying, um, that basically was saying that, oh, you know, th these lives were taken because they killed our cows. And we moved on. <laughs> we moved on from it, and this is where we are today. So um, these things would always be the after effects of those incidents that were failed, you know, that we failed to check properly. Let's move to the Punch newspapers, see what we can find over there. Very likely it's still the same or similar stories on insecurity and banditry and the headers and, you know, farmers' clashes as they've been uh, described. It says here, the Gongo and Fulani crisis, town presents evidence, alleges headers collected 50 million naira ransoms, raped 15 women. Monarchs and others present pictorial evidence of ransoms, disease victims to government. Local government chairman, community leader, accused Fulani leader of negotiating ransoms. 
And um, Pierre yeah, also says, a writer to that story, says, uh, Fulani headsmen, uh, leaders, beg for forgiveness, pledge peaceful coexistence with hosts. And that's what I just spoke about. Also, Nigeria suffered 21% drop in foreign investment flows, and that's from the United Nations. Federal government to pay 71 billion naira counterpart funding for six rail projects. Senate queries NBET's 50 billion naira escrow account. And also, Ondo eviction begins today as Southwest governors and Mietiala meet. Um, also on the Punch newspapers, family mourns plans burial as Nasarawa bandits kill Captain and six soldiers. It just never ends. It just never, never ends. You, you can go through all the papers today and you will see one Stories story of, of deaths people and who insecurity. have been killed. Yes. Um, Edo Task Force visits churches and forces COVID-19 compliance. And also robbers making way out of hotel kill Ibadan and socialite. Um, Lagos Varsity uh, uh, DVC says, my abductors threatened to transfer me to Boko Haram. And we also have um, three arrested for beating a man to death in Ogun State. Three feared dead as court members clash in Lagos. And force headquarters summons Lagos bribe-taking cops over 16-year-old's extortion. All right. So, yes, it's um, a similar picture on the Punch newspapers this morning. It doesn't seem like a lot is different in any way. Um, and, you know, the question would continue to be, um, at what point will the government, you know, make, you know, you know take a stand? At what point will the government actually make their, their stance with regards to protecting Nigerian lives and property? And we can't just move on after 10 people are killed. You, uh, in the Nasarwa story, it says here, Nasarwa bandits kill captain and six soldiers. Those are family members. Those are fathers. Those are brothers. Those are husbands. Th those are Nigerians, mm -hmm. generally. And those families would, would you know, ask for justice at some point. It may take 100 years, but at some point they will demand justice for those lives. And if the Nigerian government doesn't make its, you know, its stance known, um, con uh, you know, completely uh, condemning um, you know, the killings of Nigerians in their sleep, then I, I don't know what else we expect to happen. Um, all right. Uh, we, we, of course, um, have also seen other stories there. Of course, the um, meeting with the Mietiala should start today. The United Nations talking about Nigeria suffering 21% drop in foreign investment inflows. That's also on the Punch newspapers this morning. Let's uh, quickly move to the uh, Nation newspapers, see what other stories that we can also find here with the time that we have left. Uh, red alert in the southwest. As a quick notice, um, the, the Nation newspaper is going to be flipping on your screen in a bit. And the nation, yes, that's where it is. It says, a red alert in southwest as quick notice to head as expires. Governors to meet with Mietiala in Akure over region security. Also, Nigeria to buy AstraZeneca vaccine. 70% of resident doctors infected with COVID-19. That's really scary. Monarch declares Igboho God sent. Um, and he says, okay, also, I can't be intimidated. Death toll in communal clash hits 40 Lawmaker arrested. Also, APC targets 60 million members in new drive. And also, the South must unite to secure regions, says Kanu. Immigration chief abducted. Um, and um, Ondo Varsity shot over violence uh, fears. Also, Okorocha says, I am still in the APC. Hmm. I'm going to quickly just share, you know, on the AstraZeneca vaccine. Um, we, we, it's, um, I, I guess, you know, we can call that good news. Um, it was a week ago or two weeks ago we spoke about the Nigerian government wanting to, or rather uh, pledging a 10 billion naira yes. uh, to our vaccine development here in the country. And, you know, um, people were, um, said, oh, you know, it's a little too late. You know, there's, we're already in the what, third quarter, you know, sort of the second phase of the coronavirus um, pandemic. Um, we cannot at this point now be thinking of money to start, you know, in, you know investing in vaccine research and vaccine development. We should have done that early Hell in 2020, yeah. we should yes. have done in 2019. Um, and instead of using that money and spending that money on, you know, um, vaccine development, you might as well just buy <laughs> vaccines that have already been provided. So if they're choosing to buy the AstraZeneca, AstraZeneca vaccine, I guess it's good news. Um, I'm hoping that we have a budget that is able to accommodate as many vaccines as necessary for Nigerians, for frontline workers, for um, government officials, as it, you, know, the, the, you know, the picture always is. And of course, for the elderly, for those who are most vulnerable to the COVID-19, um, I hope that we are able to spread as much as we can across the country. It might take a lot of money, 
but I'm sure we have it. I'm but sure I don't that think that this vaccine thing, well, it's not really about my opinion here, but the issue, as we've seen it, is it doesn't seem that the government is, is doing much about this. I say this because we see the headlines in the papers, but where is the action? The government mentioned earlier that there was going to be you know, vaccine shipments in the, into the country by the end of January. And later they've moved it up to February. We've not seen any sign of any vaccine in the country. They've pledged 10 billion, like you said. We have no idea who's getting that money. What's, re, what research are they conducting right now? And you're hearing a new story about the AstraZeneca vaccine. And when you go to the front page of the Guardian newspaper, the story you still see here is about herbal medicine not certified to contain COVID-19. What this means is that Nigerians are taking you know, their own health in their own hands, literally, and yes. are seeking herbal medicine. People will take what they call agbo. They say, let them well, try these some herbs. Some people have said it let works. Them try. Yeah, they, that's, that's the thing, because <laughs> there is really no hope right now. They, they keep saying the government says they will bring a vaccine. How many people, first of all, are amenable to the idea of taking a vaccine? If, it, if and when is, is it the vaccine going to actually arrive? And then they say, it's better for me to go to the bush and pluck leaves that I know that my forefathers have taken that have worked for them. And you know, they believe that that's, that's what's more efficient. So those are angles that the Nigerian government is- Should be is, looking you know, at. Yes, you know, they, they, they cannot ignore those, you know, perspectives where there's also Nigerians who feel the vaccine has, you know, a, a chip. Um, in it that is going to make you um, a member of the 666. <laughs> There's also function. those who, <laughs> who feel the vaccine is, you know, poisoning. And we've had that type of misinformation for a very long time, even with polio. There's a time that the Nigerian army was also doing its um, um, social responsibility campaign in uh, the southeast, vaccinating children, and there was a campaign against it. Um, people started spreading rumors that they were poisoning Igbo kids and uh, people, uh, kids, children from the southeast, and it was chaos. I was in Enugu then. And so, yes, the government would have to, of course, you know, play its role to ensure that it, um, you know, assures Nigerians and is able to convince Nigerians that the vaccines are, um, are needed yes. and they're <laughs> safe, you know, for use. Um, the, you know, part where, you know, you mentioned that, you know, we don't see a lot of action. I don't, ex I, I personally don't expect that the government will every morning let us know, okay, this is the amount of money we send to AstraZeneca or to um, Pfizer and Beyond Tech um, or, or Sinopharm, you know, but. You know, well, we that's actually that, what we need you know, right let's now. Have, yeah, well, yeah, you find other yeah. countries having their COVID-19 updates every other day. But why can't yes. we have that in Nigeria? The United States because has in vaccinated. this place, we do need that reassurance as much as possible. The, the United States has vaccinated millions of people. India is having a vaccination campaign. They call it the biggest uh, vaccination campaign in the world. You know, so we would expect that Nigerians would also have similar with the giant of Africa. Um, and then it becomes heartbreaking when you see wives of governors going to the United States to take their vaccine um, and making videos of such and posting it on social media and saying that, oh, the governor will at some point also come to the United States to take his own vaccine. And, it, you know, for, for Nigerians, they'll be wondering, so if the governor can quickly, mm -hmm. and it's pretty much the same thing with our healthcare system. If you can quickly just run to the U.S. and get vaccinated, then why would you care about what happens to exactly. people in Anambra State? And we're actually running out of time right now. Let's just quickly wrap up with the front page of The Guardian. This one says, um, just about COVID-19, economies lose over $700 billion to COVID-19. And then, of course, NAVDAQ insisting on clinical trials of products. Uh, sadly, Liberal Sushama could not join us uh, for Off the Press, but uh, he would be with us when we talk in depth about our first topic topic on the oil crisis. So it's been off the press uh, with uh, Sarah Gilboa and myself. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be right back with Today in History in just a minute.